CV. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a very creepy abandoned theme park called Dreamland. Ever since I did a video about Blobby Land a few weeks ago, people have really wanted me to do an entire series on abandoned theme parks. And honestly, it is so intriguing to me. So I'm very much down for that. By the way, do you like how my sweater has clouds on it? I know it's still mid-August and I'm wearing sweaters, but I'm so excited for fall. All right, guys. So we're just going to get right into it. First, talking about the history of Dreamland. I first need to mention that the original Disneyland opened in Anaheim and California in 1955. And then Nara Dreamland followed just six years later in Japan, opening to the public in 1961. And this park was almost a carbon copy of Disneyland. It featured copies of the themed areas like Main Street USA, Adventureland, Fantasyland, and Tomorrowland. And there were even copies of the different rides and attractions at Disneyland. Things like the Sleeping Beauty Castle, Autopia, Skyway, Teacup Ride, Submarine Voyage, the Monorail, the Pirate Ship, Double Decker, Omnibuses, Vintage Cars. I mean, this place was really, really trying to be Disneyland as best as possible. And if you looked from above, the layout of the park was also almost identical to Disneyland. Even the entrance of the park looked the exact same. Nara Dreamland was popular for a time and welcomed 1.6 million guests at its peak. Well, soon after, Tokyo Disneyland finally came to Japan on April 15th of 1983. And it basically did what Dreamland was unable to do. Because Dreamland was never able to successfully license the Disney brand and characters for their park. So the visitor numbers at Dreamland collapsed because everyone wanted to go to the real place where they could actually see Mickey Mouse. Then in 2001, Universal Studios Japan opened up and attracted 11 million guests in its first year. So Dreamland continued to struggle until 2006 before it was closed down and was in an extreme state of disrepair at the time. It was then completely demolished in 2017 to make room for housing. So it's kind of a sad story because Dreamland was really supposed to be Disneyland for Japan, but they couldn't license it. They just could not live up to Disneyland. And then Tokyo Disneyland came around and Universal Studios. So all these amazing parks were just opening up around Dreamland and they just lost out. So I really wanted to talk about the creepy things that happened here after it was closed down, the different paranormal aspects of this park. So let's first talk about the dream boats. While the park was left abandoned, many people would sneak in and explore the area, whether it was during the day or at night. And the most common report of paranormal activity was near the dream boats ride. And as you can see by the pictures, the boats are really old and destroyed and definitely very unsafe to go on. But people say that when they go on this boardwalk and explore around there, they always hear these really strange noises. They've described these sounds as rustling in the bushes, splashes in the water as if someone was swimming, but you couldn't see them. And the creepiest thing is that people have heard distant laughter, sounding like it was coming from a child, but once again, they couldn't pinpoint where exactly it was coming from. The rumor is that there was a terrible accident that occurred on the boats where a child drowned and it was covered up by the park. This is of course just alleged. It's just a rumor, but it might explain why people hear all of these weird sounds in this area. People have tried to rationalize it, saying it could be water pumps that are still working, making the splashing noises. Other people say it could be bullfrogs making weird noises that sound like a kid. But to me, that sounds like a pretty far stretch. I just get this feeling that something bad happened here and the spirits are still lingering. And then we have some creepy stories about the teacup ride. The teacup ride is the other other place that people have seen very strange things, but particularly at night. I found this story about this group of four friends that were wandering the abandoned park after midnight. They decided to go to this park after dark to avoid being seen by security. And before I continue, can we all just agree what a horrible idea that is? And listen, I am glad this happened in a way, so I have this spooky story to tell you, but abandoned theme parks are so dangerous to traverse, especially at night. There's holes in the ground, there's areas on the rides you can fall through, there's pipes and other sharp equipment just lying around. It's just a very bad idea. Very dangerous 
don't do it. Anyways though, they were walking around for about an hour, didn't see anything too abnormal until they came across the teacups. Most of them were broken and dirty and vines and leaves had completely taken over them and they were just over there taking photos, goofing around when they suddenly heard this little girl's voice say, Hello? Now they couldn't see exactly where the voice was coming from, but it almost seemed to echo and it made them think that maybe it was coming from inside one of the teacups. Have you come to play with me? The voice continued to ask them. So now the group was starting to get really, really scared. A couple of them ran away back to the car, but the other two stayed behind. They tried to scan through all of the teacups with their eyes, but it was too dark to see anything. But then right at the very back, they saw a shadow of a little girl's head pop up from the side of one of the teacups, followed by a little arm that came up and began waving at them. So they quickly took a photograph, ran back to the car, and when they got home, they looked at the image to see that the little girl's eyes and mouth were sewn shut. That is so creepy. That is so creepy. So clearly it was like another creepy spirit child that was there. And I have heard so many creepy things about this park. And of course now it's completely demolished. So nothing else is happening there. But what does concern me is that houses were built over top of the land. So does that mean that maybe some of those houses could be haunted by these spirits? I don't know, but I kind of feel bad for those people. Anyways though guys, that is the creepy tale of Dreamland. If you want me to continue doing a whole series on abandoned theme parks, I definitely can. Give this video a thumbs up and let me know if you want me to do that. But I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!